So I recently lost one of my dogs, Kira. Um, she was an amazing, an amazing dog. She was smart. She was loving. She was everything you could ask for in a dog. Um, she was there for me every single day of my life for almost 15 years. And she was still kicking. She was very energetic. She, she liked to run. She liked to communicate. And she wasn't burdened by old age. She could have lived a few years, I believe. But unfortunately, uh, she got ill and that was it. Thankfully, her sister is still with me, Bianca. Um, but um, I can still feel the emptiness that she left in my life. Because that emptiness previously was filled with uh, joy, was filled with curiosity, was filled with um, just love, just, you know, happiness. Um, now that she's gone, I felt that emptiness. I felt that there was something that wasn't sustaining me anymore. Immediately after she died, uh, I still had to, you know, live, work and take care as well of her sister, Bianca. So I had to deal with my grief and at the same time be practical. So what happened was I started dissociating. So I, um, I was crying and grieving. And then when I had to, immediately I, I could, when I had to work or when I had to talk with people, I just shifted immediately and all my emotions sank. So I would just, I think dissociate is the right word. I would just disconnect from what I was feeling so that I could do what I had to do. And this uh, caused me difficulties in connecting with Bianca, my other dog, at first. Um, anyway, I was aware of this, what was going on, and I allowed it, I allowed it to happen because... Well, because I didn't have a lot of choice in the matter at the, at, in, in that moment. So um, I did what I could so I can process it. And I'm still doing it, I believe, uh, because it takes time to get used to a new reality. While I was um, going through this process of dissociation, I was trying to look as well, um, review. I was trying to review what has actually meaning in my life. What are my priorities? What... What do I love? What do I want? And um, what can I do about it? Because I understood that, unfortunately in life, you can be stripped away of everything you love, of everything you care for. So you have to be wise about what actually those things are so that you can enjoy them while, while they're still present. So I had to review the whole thing and I was listening to people uh, going through, I was listening to other people going through their own difficulties and uh, I was trying to understand how and why were they keeping, maintaining a positive view on life and why weren't they cynical, bitter uh, about it because you can be overwhelmed by those feelings especially when you lose somebody you cared when, and when that person or animal that you cared about was one of the things that gave you joy and satisfaction and sustained you in, in other difficult times. So when you're stripped away from that, that, that support is not an easy process. So I was curious about what, why, why, how they were maintaining that compassion, that love, that, that warmth inside them. So first of all, I noticed two things. The first one was that you don't have a choice sometimes. Life can be beautiful, but can also be cruel. And there are circumstances where you don't, you don't have a choice in a matter. So you have to move on. You have to go through it and doing the best you can and recover eventually. Um, the second is what I was curious about. It's like, well, if you don't have a choice in what's happening, you do have a choice in how to react, right? So considering my experience with dissociating between having to grief and having to be practical and moving with my life so trying to find a balance between those two I was thinking maybe the people who are who maintain that warmth inside them who uh, choose 
to be compassionate despite everything, who choose to love, are actually holding on to both of themselves, the more practical one and the one that's still in pain. They are choosing to hold on to their spirit. They are choosing to hold on to themselves because they know that that's the only stable thing they have. Not losing yourself, not letting go of yourself, that will um, generate meaning in your life. So taking ownership, helping yourself, guiding yourself, holding yourself in those situations, even, even though it's painful in that moment, is the way to not become a prey, a victim of your own reactions. But you have to believe that you are worth holding on to. You have to believe that despite whatever you're feeling, whether you're feeling pain, whether you're feeling grief, whether you're feeling uh, disillusionment, disappointment, whatever you're feeling, those negative emotions, you have to believe you're worth holding on to because that will sustain you, that will support you eventually in all the processes that you will have to go through in life.